Welcome back to Two Homers and a Realist. We got the full crew here. We are how many days away? Seventeen days away 17. from the big kickoff. We're Marvin Mims Very days away. We are Marvin Mims away, boys and girls. This Andre is exciting. Wolf days away. Andre, Andre Wolf. That was Wolf. awesome. Yes. I love that. They on the the OU radio crew today. Their their tweet about it. They cut off Brent Musburger before he says. I think the quote is, "They're if he's right at the end of it. He says, let that be proof that their next personnel change.'" That's a that's um, a mistake. Will be their first one. That's a mistake. Mm. Talking about how they had moved him from offense to defense and how good all those changes that they I were just making in the last that two name years. Out of, my, out of my head on number seventeen. Oh, nice, very good. I didn't see that. I came up with uh, Moses, Moses Madu. Madu maybe. <laughs> <laughs> really, that's, that's pretty good. That's a deep, know, that's a deep cut. Deep cut from Jay, who joins us today. So Jay's here. So I'm is here. Connor, Lucas, and Steve, obviously. So let's get into it. Today we're going to be talking about Big 12 predictions as well as some other teams of note. We're going to talk about what we think uh, the season ahead is going to bring for them, how good they're going to be. We'll talk about how many team total wins they're going to have and debate that. We'll all put uh, some predictions down on paper. It's going to set us up nicely for the, uh, the pod in two weeks for sure. I'm, and that'll be the all OU pod. So this one's going to be about all the opponents and all the potential opponents out there. You may have seen today I ran a poll about who OU's toughest opponent will be, and I included Alabama slash Ohio State slash Georgia on there. That was my vote. I thought I was going to get some kind of some some static from from Lucas on that, but <laughs> nothing. It actually got last I looked there were 81 responses. It's been our strongest poll yet. It's a good response. Yeah, and it was some a good really response good response on really the follow was. through, which usually doesn't happen on a on a on a tweet you know uh, oh. secondary tweet poll. Yeah. But it's been pretty strong too, where I eliminated the the playoff contenders and added Nebraska to the mix. But my opinion was, when you look at Nebraska, Oklahoma State, Texas, and Baylor, Baylor's our toughest opponent um, on paper right now. Who knows? We'll That's see what, what the, I chose. We'll, we'll see what the season brings. So, who wants to to start us off talking about Connor? I know had a lot of stuff on his agenda. Yeah, I mean, where do we want to start? I mean, I've done I've done a lot of predictions. You've done a lot of research. Not necessarily research but i've given it quite a bit of thought between the other teams in the big 12 and and where i predict them to finish um we just want to talk about we can make some over under predictions first and then and then let that thread into what you're thinking about and asking us what we think where they'll finish because this has implications for where they'll finish so i pulled the over unders on team totals from uh uh, vegasinsider.com not bovada and um, we're going to skip past Oklahoma, although Oklahoma comes in at nine and a half wins. Regular season wins out of 12 games. The expectation is they'll win nine and a half. Easy money. So, bye, bye, bye. But, yeah, we'll, we'll talk, talk about, about that next, yeah. or two weeks from now. But next team in the list, I just uh, had them in somewhat of an order of predicted finish in the conference, is Texas. Texas at eight and a half. So I want to go around the room and see who has... Um, what for Texas if they're going to be over or under the eight and a half? Who wants to start? I can start. Um, I've got Texas under eight and a half. I've got Texas at seven and five this year. Ooh. Yeah. So, um, multitude of reasons. I think some of the ones I noted. Uh, well, they're Texas. They are Texas. Um, you know, how they'll do against OU. I think I, I wrote down literally, I mean, if you guys want to see how a butcher slaughters cows, then <laughs> you should go to the Red River rivalry this year. I think it's going to be wow. just a complete beatdown. Um, I think Sark's in the hot seat after after that game as Ooh, well. Ooh, big prediction, but that's probably not a bad prediction. I don't. Uh, Texas isn't known for firing midseason, but I think there's going to be quite an uproar. They're going to get beat down by Bama. They're they're going to come what three weeks later play OU. I think it's going to be a very similar story, um, and then I think they're going to actually struggle within conference. I, the fact that, I mean, everything we're hearing out of Austin right now with this two-quarterback thing that they have going on. How many times have you heard that actually work out? I heard uh, You've seen that in the in the fall camp and actually seen it work out. Yeah, and, and yeah, uh, rarely. Yeah. You see, you rarely see it work out. I think it's more of a worry because that's the thing. I don't think Sark has any intention of playing two quarterbacks. Right, he just doesn't They may have the too. intention of playing Hudson Card up until he gets his – but put on the ground a lot against Bama and then bringing in Ewers after that. That makes the most sense. Um, so it does still. make sense. And, and if you're those two players, are you positioning yourself not to be the starter, to not have to face Bama and to come in and be kind of the hero who gets the you know, the old backup you quarterback. Blake, you Everybody loves it. the backup quarterback. And 
he's the most popular guy on campus always. Is that a good position to be in? Which is not a healthy thing for your team, but if it could be the case. If that line is any indicator, if, if what everyone's saying about that offensive line is true, um, I I wouldn't surprise me if someone was saying What that, game you know? is the OU game for them? Is it five or six? I believe it's the fifth game for both So you teams. got two potentially really strong defenses. Obviously, Bama's going to be a really strong defense. I think we're going to have a really strong defense coming at you in the first half of the season. That's got to be pretty daunting for a team, who, for a, for a quarterback and for, a, for an entire offensive unit who's got to be worried about will they have their stuff together, will they have, have gelled, will they know what they're doing to protect themselves, much less succeed. It's... It's going to be such a – for as new as everything was for Texas last year with Sarkeesian coming in, this this year is even a bigger question mark with everything going on. It's funny, I, you know, I know Casey Thompson transferred to Nebraska, but I think we talked about it last week. Was he transferring because he wasn't going to get the starting job, or was he transferring because he saw a team that had no hope of him being successful as a quarterback? Good so, question. Very open question. Anyways, yeah, I, I've got Texas at the under, uh, at right. under eight and a half at, at seven and five. What do you think, Jay? Year. I'll go under on Texas also. Okay. I mean, I think they're. I think a good season for them would be that nine win mark. That would be a very good season for Sark. I just don't see with how Bama they get on the there. schedule. You have to think that. I just yeah. don't see how they get there. Mm-hmm. I think. Eight tops, probably seven. Mm-hmm. I'll go seven wins for Texas. Well, and being at home for Texas lately has not meant a lot. No. Right? I mean, there's not They've sold more season tickets than they ever have this year, though. Right. For, for, one, for, one, for one single game. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, that's the thing. How many is, Alabama fans are season ticket holders? <laughs> exactly. In Austin. Right? So, Some people bought Tulane season tickets last year, you yeah, know. Idiots. So, it happens. We, we still How'd that work out? We need to talk about the lawsuit there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have Texas at seven and five. Also, wow! I was surprised to see them at eight and a half on the gambling odds. Yeah, I was too. And I think I don't think, I don't think their defense has improved enough because they were horrific last year. Fair Gary bad. Patterson now, and their offense. Did they lose Overshone? Did they lose that linebacker? They just, no, they, he's still there. He's still there. They don't have the offensive line. I don't think to be able to do anything downfield because you can't protect him that long. They have the receivers are going to be good, even yeah, though they just lost their what, definitely number there. two receiver. Skill position wise, I think they're there. Probably. I think skill position wise, right. yeah, Robinson's Bijan, awesome, Worthy's awesome, I mean, but are they, they're not going to have any time to throw the ball. I don't. Bijan's going to have to pull what we talked about on last pod with uh, Ramondre. He's going to yeah. he's going to have to break tackles, in and the back he court. hasn't proven his ability to really do that. Well, and look how they treated Bijan last year. Was taken <laughs> right. out of games a lot because right. of being "quote unquote" banged up. Well, there was when, a chance he was going to transfer. I mean, that was and rumors. That too. Yeah. So you look at Arkansas; he really got shut down. Obviously, didn't do anything against OU, even though they had a lot of success. OU was able to stop him. Um, Oklahoma State stopped him. Baylor stopped him. Grinch's so. defense against the run game was actually. Commend- it was actually pr- commendable. Well, he had a great defensive line too. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I like that. I like your your. Uh, everyone's thinking I'm going to make it four for four. I think that the under. I really think that is a chance where you've got as a better. You've got some bias. Texas is one of those teams that's got a lot of money behind it, and a lot of people bet on Texas. Yeah. You you do now on some of the in some of the sites and places you do have an opportunity to bet, um, where you can sway it. But it it's typically what happens with these lines is you get a lot of homers and fans who bet on their team rather than people betting against that team. And so with these teams that are really popular, if anything, the natural inclination is to push them up. And so the betting line gets set a little higher than it would be if it were unbiased. And I think this is a great example of it. I think 7-5 is a much more appropriate number for Texas. Oklahoma State is 8.5 as well. I don't think they've got the bias in, as far as fan base and betters, but um, I, I would, I'll start this one off. We'll go in reverse order maybe. I think that is something based on what was true last year and not this year. They lost a lot of players. They lost a lot of talent, especially on defense, including their coordinator. Um, last year, if you look back, they had several games they won that should have, they should have or could have lost. They basically did lose the game against um, Boise State. 
They could have lost to Missouri State. They obviously could have lost to OU. Could have lost to Texas. They could have lost to Texas. Should have lost to Texas, probably. Yep. Um, who do they play between Missouri State and Boise? Was there somebody else in there? There's somebody early in the season that they oh, struggled Tulsa. against. Tulsa. Yes, Tulsa gave him a, a run. Who also gave Cincinnati a run, so maybe Tulsa's pretty good. I'm going to say under 8.5 for OSU. What I'm, do you think? I've Lucas? got him 9-3. and three. Ooh. Um, I still don't think Spencer Sanders is any good whatsoever. Everyone knows this. I think the offensive line has to be a little bit improved because they were pretty pathetic last year. It's going to be interesting to see what Derek Mason does, the defensive coordinator, because from all accounts, they want him running the same defense as they ran last yeah, he year. He said they're going to do everything the same so, with wholly new personnel. <laughs> yeah, so instead of him bringing his system in, he's essentially learning the previous system. It doesn't sound but like But they do enough. have quite a few kids. I think Trace Ford is going to be a monster Trace if he good. stays healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, but they did lose Malcolm Rodriguez. I mean, they lost some guys that are mm-hmm. that can play, but offensively, he, who knows? Yeah, uh, it sounds like the the Presley one of the Presley kids is going to be really good. Um, they got the Shetron kid that we hope to get at OU. He may turn out to be you know. Really He's good. maybe their, their guy. The go-to guy. And I just I think as an overall conference, the conference isn't great. This is so true. So I don't think it's going to be I, – I, they're, what, eight and a half. I think they're going to get nine, so it's close. But mm-hmm. I think I would go Well, the non-conference schedule helps that. them. We'll see what Central yeah. Michigan brings. They've Arizona, got a big revenge Arizona factor. you got Herm Edwards and Arizona yeah, State. Yeah, that's true. And there's so, so some wild cards there. I, I think they probably get the emotional edge against Central Michigan because they look at that as the scene of the crime with the – the mythical extra time at the end of the game and all that. Um, now, that can work against you as well. It's a Thursday night game. Weird things happen. Start of the season. They could lose focus. Uh, but they do have a – they don't have anybody like Texas has. They don't have an Alabama on the schedule. So they can win all those games, which obviously sets them up real nicely. That's a, that's a good point. What do you think, Jay? I think the number's spot on in terms of – you think they're going to be? I don't high? think they can win eight and a half. <laughs> I just meant in terms of placing a bet. I think it's right there. You you could talk me into them getting nine wins or eight. Yeah, what, what's it going to be? Make the call. I'll go under. All right, Connor. Um, I've got over. I've got uh, nine and three as well. I think they sweep their non-con schedule. I think they squeak out a win against Arizona State. Um, but I think they do drop three conference games. Us, uh, if we want to get specific, us, Baylor, and I think they uh, go up to Kansas State and lose. Um, I like how you're actually looking at the games and thinking about them more deliberately, whereas I'm just kind of playing by the seat of my pants. You're I've, you're actually looking at who they've got. Yeah, yeah, I went down everybody's schedule smart. and just you know, did a, a loose like. That's good. This will be the win total. But I mean, I, I think with Oklahoma State, it's just another one of those weird things. Like they've they've done things where people aren't going to think they're going to finish well in the conference, and they've been contenders. And then they've done other things where they think they're going to finish in the top half, and they've been you know just number a seven. Joke. In the conference. Yeah, and they were like three yards away last year from winning the Big Twelve title. Arizona State, they're they're, they're, a ha- they're a half a yard away from winning the Big Twelve that's title. That's right. So I mean, I think yeah, Arizona State is going to be. It's a swing game. I'm that's super swing game. super that's excited the, that's for the that game. Between nine and three and eight and four. Probably. I think that'll. Yeah. I think that's going to say a lot about both teams. I think Herm Edwards as a coach has that's probably his biggest game to date uh, outside of this conference. I don't think he gets the athletes there. He can be a good coach, but when you don't have any athletes. Yeah. I mean, How it, different are his athletes than Oklahoma State's, though? I think those schools are extremely similar. I don't know. From what they bring to the table. I think Oklahoma State yeah. probably wins a couple of bigger dudes out of out of Oklahoma. I think Oklahoma's talent's probably better mm-hmm. uh, opposed to Arizona's. Right. Probably. I mean, Ari- right. Arizona probably has a little bit of California athletes, but OSU's getting Texas athletes. Yes, but as much as well, I want to say, you know, Sanders is Sanders is Sanders. We all know Sanders. Yeah, I, mean, Sanders I think he can, still plays in his high school days, but at the same time, it's still just it's still another off season. Mm-hmm. It's still a chance for him to get coached up. Like you have to you have to give some credence to that, some value there. So I think it's a I think it's a quiet nine and three though. I don't think it's anything that anyone you know starts ringing bells about. Baylor's the next team, seven and a half. Um, That's a shocking total. That to is me. a shocking total. Too low. Right? Yeah, I've got Baylor at ten and two this year. Yeah, I, I definitely have them at an over. So you guys have them at an over as well, yes. Connor. What do you say, over? Yep, nine and three. Luke, I mean, over, that just over, seems over. Ridiculous to me. How can, me too. How it's Dave Aranda. Top ten teams. I know they lost a lot. They, they lost they a lot of people lot. too. They have to be really confident in that quarterback to let Bohannon just go. Yeah. And told him in the spring, hey, the other guys are starters. They so knew that if, early. If you want to yeah. go look around, we're 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 all for helping you out. And that's that's hard for a coach to do. Yeah. 
especially in this day and age when you need depth. Absolutely. And with a transfer portal, mm -hmm. you're really not wanting to lose backup quarterback. You know who was your starter yeah. for the majority of the season? Who took you? Who took and won a? Who won a Big a Twelve title? BCS bowl for the most part, yeah. yeah. For you. And, and, and or I'm sorry, BCS uh, New Year's Six. Yeah, New Year's Six bowl. I I may be overemphasizing this, but that's a program that's got their stuff together. Yeah, they Dave have Aranda, replaced Dave has it. people. At, they've actually gone through several coaches after obviously tragedy and really ugly, ugly situation with Art Brylesley, you know, being dismissed, and and they have just kept it going. And we we were down there. We were impressed with the facilities. We were impressed with all of the other intangibles that surround the program. They've got a lot of money going into it, a lot of support. They seem to have everything going in the right direction, which I think the things we see visibly should be a reflection of what's going on behind the scenes probably. And I would say that reflects well on them. Again, builds a strong program with a strong coach. That seems like a really low number to yeah, me. Yeah, even at 7.5, seven I've got them at 10-2. Even if I'm two games off and they're eight and four, that's still a winner. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That, I yeah. mean, who's their non-conference? BYU. BYU. That's that's in, the tough in, one. In Provo, we talked about that. I've got, yeah. them, I've got them losing that game. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. So that's a that's fun matchup. That's one. a future that's Big a Twelve matchup. matchup. Like that's a fun. It's that's a, a fun matchup. week too. Um, it's a huge matchup for both teams. Yeah. Um, a real barometer of where those two seasons are going to go potentially. Baylor is what Oklahoma State wishes they were, I think, in a school. Well, go from one really well coached team to another. In in my opinion, in Kansas State, Kansas State six and a half. Um, that's I, another gimme. Team. I think that's a, a, an easy over um, to me. So you're agreeing? You're also seeing Absol an over. Absolutely. What do Absolutely. you guys think? I got them at seven and five. I don't know how easy. So not over easy, but is. an over. Yeah. Okay. I and mean, when you just look at the Big Twelve teams, like yeah, they're not going to beat OU. I don't think they beat Baylor. Texas is a toss-up because uh, they're probably Oklahoma all State's about the same up. level. Oklahoma State's on a toss-up. There's four games right there. Yeah, I feel Who's like Kansas their State. Uh, they have Missouri, Missouri, Missouri. Yeah. Tulane. Yeah. How good is yeah. Missouri? How yeah, exactly. I don't think Missouri's that good. I think now Tulane is a really good team last oh, year. They Tulane. were extremely good. <laughs> yeah, I think um, you lean, you got to lean on Kleiman as the coach there. I, I agree. Mean, yep. That guy they coaches, put it to us. <laughs> that guy coaches people up, but Kansas but he, State. But he put it to Riley. Yeah, I think he's a well a good coach. But anytime anyone wants to point that out and say, "Well, look at he's got your number," he didn't have our number. He had Riley's number. So if he could get USC on the schedule, that's an on well, last year's win. pod. You said there's no such thing as a coach having another coach's number. I don't think I said a coach. Uh -huh. I said another coach having a team's number. Oh, he definitely has a coach's number. Oh, okay. And. and <laughs> And between, That's kind of one of the same when the coach has been at a school for a while. Well, it would be, but it's not <laughs> anything indicative of the school. There's not something about the soil in Norman. Yeah, I agree. That he can't coach against. Right, it's, it's a one. It's, it's a coach versus guy. coach matchup. Yeah. And and he's got he, he is one of. I mean, would you say Bill Snyder coaches. had Bob Stoops' number? I wouldn't yeah. say that, but Snyder did beat Stoops. What? Three, not only did three he beat times? him, he played him really close. So I'd say there's a couple things I don't know about having his number. That's that gets into a little superstition, I guess. What I would say is, one, he's a really good coach, so he's going to – really good coaches, coach teams, and, and they're going to be tough and competitive. Two, there's always that difficulty of playing against um, someone who was one of your role models right. and, and everything. mentor. So mentor, that, that's difficult. He also knows you well. Um, so I think all of those are factors. And I will say, even though Bob Stoops had a great record against Kansas State and Bill Snyder – he played us close. If you remember, oh, yeah. time and again, it would be deep into a game where we had that game under control, and all of a sudden there's an onside kick coming, or we're deep in the game. It's like, this is not over yet. And they'd, they'd make a, a game not so close close right at the end. Real tribute to Bill Snyder for sure. So what do you think, Jay? I'll go, I'll go under all just right, so that we're not under. all on the same page. Thank God. Uh, they've got four, I say, W's for sure on the schedule. Yeah. So that leaves a lot of room. Most for, people do if they're in the Big Twelve. That leaves a lot of room for error. Fifty-fifty games. That I don't know. I'll give them Texas Tech and maybe West TCU. Virginia. TCU is a toss-up. Oak State to me is a toss-up. I mean, they get they Baylor's get a loss. <clears throat> yeah. OU is a loss. <clears throat> they get Oklahoma State in Manhattan, and they get Texas. Yeah. They get Texas and Manhattan as well. Um, I think that was kind of my deciding, you know. When's that game? 
Which one? The Texas game. That's uh, first weekend in November. So. I mean, Texas could be. Texas I mean, may be just on there. Bijan could limping just be around. driving his Lamborghini, not even playing on the team anymore. <laughs> by then, so. And I mean, that's two. Those, so those those games are actually back to back: Oklahoma State and Texas in Manhattan. I mean, that's two. If you beat if you beat Oklahoma State October 29th, and you roll in, you Texas rolls in, man, good luck. Not only throwing the team off, that fan base is going to be yeah electrified. Despite what it's their a tough is place about. to play. It's a deceptively tough place to play. It's a great fan there. base. You never know it's, how cold will be in November either. It could be. That's true. That is really cold. true. It could be fine. It's super windy. Yep. A lot so. of things can happen there. And I've got them sweeping their non-con though. I mean, I think that's... Well, now we're getting into the meat of the, the craziness in the Big 12. We, we start with, uh, we've got two teams at 6 and 5, TCU and Iowa State. Maybe we can do these together, move past these a little more quickly. I, boy, I don't know. TCU, that's a real wild card. Iowa State, I think, is a wild card. I think they're well coached, but I don't know what they've got. They're real high on several of their players, but that just could be marketing. I, I have a... I think these are well placed lines, probably at six and a half. I think the fact we're having to guess it, so hard. At it's it, kind it's of a, a good line. kind of a coin toss. So I'll, I'll say for TCU under Iowa State over, just because I'm going to go with the the coaching, and you've got a new coach at TCU and and an existing coach at at Iowa State. I concur with yours. <clears throat> views, including strong views from you two. I got Iowa State seven and five. And TCU five and seven. Iowa State would be an over and an under for TCU. So same as me. I'm Jay? concerned. Sorry. I'll go, go over TCU and. I haven't Who's their starting the quarterback this year? TCU. Yep. Chandler Morris. Chandler Morris is going to start. Yep. Hmm. I my, think. That's I what think all my TCU friends are saying. I think the new offense that they'll put in put in place, they've got very good wide receivers. And if Chandler can mature a little bit, he can be pretty dynamic. I think the Sunny Dykes I, helps that too. I think they'll outscore some teams. Will they play any defense though? Don't know. Exactly. Are they going to run the hurry they up Texas been playing Tech any offense? Defense, which is with crazy. Sunny Dykes. Because as much as Patterson has been known for their defense, they. It's about the last five two years or three now. years. Well, and they've been, they they've been, been losing. They've been losing top defensive. I mean, when did we play the Big Twelve championship against them? Twenty seventeen. Seventeen. So four, been a long time four years of not being as good. And that was the last time you really heard TCU had guys right in the yeah. defensive backfield. <clears throat> so what? What are you going to say for Iowa State then, Jay? Mm, I'll go under. Okay. Nothing to base Mr. on. Mr. Different. Mr. Different. All right. The only thing with it is is. They're they high, they're so high, underachieved high, high last year. They are. They, they barely beat this total last year with the best team preseason yeah. that they've had in right. like 30 years. Right. Brock Purdy was their best quarterback ever and all that. I mean, they had a great running back. And we know they're they going to lose Iowa end. to start the season because they always do. In their defense, corn That's yields were up a lot, so they had a lot of distractions last year. Yeah, I don't know. I, Unfortunately, in a weird way, I'll actually feel bad if they do go under, only because I hate to see someone squander their opportunity like I, I feel like uh, their coach might have done. Campbell. He was about as hot of a name he was. as you could get. And, and that I feel that way too. That they threw out last but year. Uh, my, I think about all the humans in this world and all the opportunities different ones have, and the fact that. I'm not going to real, feel real sorry for him. Um, Burst, sorry, we're going to light a cigar here real quick. Um, what the heck? <laughs> uh, we're out of juice here. That's all right. I think I'm good. There's a fire over here. Yeah, you can light it in the fire. <laughs> I go, I can hit pause and get it going. I don't like him going. personally. No, we saw him lose his, his composure. Well, I mean, last Just year, in general. Well, too. I mean, God, like, remember last year, and it, it did set the tone for them the entire season, saying... Winning a Big Twelve title is not my goal, or something along yeah. those lines. Yeah, that's, that's not what I'm here to do. That's really weird. Like, what, do you, what are we talking about here? I Very dislike him after the way he acted in that Big Twelve championship. Oh, that that, that did that turned, come off like such a little crybaby. Yeah. yeah, Well, yeah, and even though he was wrong on that call, 
It was the behavior associated yeah. with it that Losing was a real turnoff. Losing his mind. Yeah. The, just, I've never been here before, obviously. Very much. And he yeah. seems yeah. a little phony to yep. me he does. He's in fake. interviews and stuff. He lost a I lot of money by not jumping ship. Yeah. I would agree. So maybe he doesn't make the best decisions. All right, we got West Virginia and Texas Tech both at five and a half. Maybe this is another tough one. Um, I'm going to jump in first and say that I'm not a real strong believer in Virginia Tech. But five and a half doesn't We're not seem. Virginia Tech. I'm sorry, West Virginia. Um, who does mixing play, the two, who, who am does I not? West Virginia, Virginia Tech. Tech. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So West Virginia, um, I just am not r- a big believer in them. But five and a half isn't really hard to a- attain. Ah, boy, I don't know. I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say over for them, and I am gonna say over for Texas Tech because I feel like they've. There's, I don't know, maybe I'm buying into the hype. They got a, a real good promotion machine behind them. Their, their videos, they, they look like they got one of the best swimming teams going. They got all the football players in the pool, that one video. Elite. So, I, I don't know. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and give them both overs. So, they have the backyard brawl and Virginia Tech. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've right. got Pitt and Virginia well, Tech. Not I've got both fun. teams going five and seven. Okay. So, they're so you both got under, under, under on both of those. I've got okay. under on both as well. All right. Well, you guys probably know what you're talking about. My Jay? my West Virginia under is stark though. It's like a it's a three and nine. Mm. Like it's, wow, I I, only, I think they really struggle in conference. I see two two gimmies and a bunch of fifty fifties. I don't know. Um, Give them half of the fifty fifties, and what's that up? But and I'll, I'll go under too. All right, I'll under go under. And they, All right, for good. I get to be different. They got a new quarterback that yeah, who, who was a five star at one yeah. point, and uh, then started for Georgia last year, and then got benched. yeah, right. So. I mean, where, where did he start? Not USC. Very good That's yeah. a good, good USC. And well, I'm going to say uh, my Georgia. mine comes with no confidence, so I'll hang my hat on that. Agree. Kansas, um, uh, yeah. two and a half. I didn't do tech. Who did I do tech? Did you put me down for tech? You had you had under on tech, right? Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Kansas <laughs> at two and a half. That. Who is Kansas's non-conference schedule? Duke. Did they play Jinx High School? They played Duke. Duke. Okay. And South Dakota, I think. They have one game that I think they'll win. I have them under. I have them at one and eleven. They have Tennessee Tech. Yep. Then huh. they've got Houston no, and Houston. Duke. They're going to beat Tennessee Tech. They're going to lose to the next two. I've got Kansas at three and nine. He's got the over. They're going to beat Pete Texas. Yep. Connor's got Why the not? under. I've got the under. I've got the under. They Jay, own, they own Texas. <laughs> it's been like 1,300. And that's in Lawrence. Games. That may be the only game that the Texas tough focuses on this they'll, year. They'll come out at halftime and on the student radio, and they'll say, just walk in for free. For like free. They did that may be the game that saves Sarkeesian's career right there. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. Let's, I'll, give, I'll give Kansas three wins. The over? Yeah, I'll go over. I have been burned by Kansas so many times I, I playing we'll Big be... 12 Survivor, <laughs> trying to th- get them to win a game against mm. a junior high team, and they can't pull it off. I'm so burned by them. Well, now we get into some of the non-conference, out-of-conference out of games, um, not, not Big 12, that is. It's going to start right with uh, USC at 9.5. Going back to something I said earlier, that is nothing but hype to me. For sure. We've got, and we're, we need to settle our, our bet. I look back at the text stream. I tried to find it in the pod. I couldn't find where I think we talked about it in the pod. We had asked Jay. We said, Jay, what was the bet? And he thought it was 7.5. We don't know. The last game, you said 8. What do you want to make the over under at? And I'll see if I want to agree to a bet with you. Is eight good? I've got them, yeah. Eight. So you say eight, over and four. I say under? Yep. So should we make it seven and a half? Seven and a half, yep. That sounds generous to you. I think we're going to make it eight. <laughs> I want to tie it eight. So we can push? Is yeah, so we can push. So at eight okay. is, is the bet. And I'm going to say they're going to be under. And you say they're going to be over. Yep. But the, I can see nine and three, eight and four. Vegas says nine and a half. I'm and definitely I think, under on that. Okay, I'm definitely under on that, obviously. I think They're not that, beating Utah. That is 100% all the Southern Cal money. That, In fact, I looked it up. OJ has about $50 million on it, mm. his last his last pennies. No, I, I, just, I just don't see it. I don't see how in the world they can win that many games going from going from 4-8, and eight, knowing what we know about who they actually did get in. They've in got there's no there's really no objective data to establish that. They've got that two line really all. talented receivers. Uh-huh. Yep. And a quarterback With that potential. has tons of potential if he can start throwing it deep better. And we'll he be didn't go deep for, for us. If he can well. read if he can read offenses and if he, he's running for his life and we know I don't think he needs to read history, that many defenses cuz the back 12 defense Well, true. Is not we got to read some good. defense. 
He's got to read the eight guys that drop. They're definitely the losing Utah. Rush, They're three definitely three losing Notre Dame. That's two guaranteed losses. And to the me. other thing we know is that I don't think Lincoln's going to let him run the way that, that he probably will need well, to Well, because run. the whole reason they stay with Lincoln because he's going to get him prepared for the NFL, and they're not running quarterbacks in the NFL, according to his dad. Right. So he wants him to just be a pocket passer. Right, which is not going to be a very good success story, I don't think. With that not a good model with that team. I've got under as well. I've got. Okay. I've actually got USC as 7-5. and five. Mm. Nice. Wow. Um, I like, I, the, I, well, I, I like the number, obviously. Wow. A couple, couple of notes there. I think they look really, really good against bad teams. And I think they look abysmal against good and great teams. So you got to factor in. They will lose to somebody they are 20-plus point favorites against if exactly. Lincoln Riley is no, for where sure. true to his history. Um, I think Stanford, yeah. some physical well, power Well, Sta- Stanford Week 2 is not a fun test for him to go no, to Stanford. No, it's not. It's not. Uh, Caleb Williams is going to have big numbers. Uh, they're not going to translate into wins, though. So. So. I like that. Jay, what do you think? I'll go wonder. Um, or unanimous. I think getting to that 10th. Nope. Unanimous. No, unanimous on what's on paper. Right on now. nine and a half. Oh, oh yeah, according to Vegas. I yeah. mean, getting to that tenth win is just. It's I tough. don't see how you get it's to that. Tough. You get to that tenth win, you're playing for a conference championship. I mean, I think no with Utah kidding. and Notre Dame on the schedule, that's pretty well, much two if, guaranteed if losses. If you look at, at Bovada and and the chances or the the implied probability based on the betting lines of them getting to the playoffs, it's it's higher than OU's, which I get. I guess they're in an easier conference than OU's in this year. I'm not sure about that. So. I don't get it. But they have two higher ranked teams on their schedule. I mean, I know. Notre I Dame's in the top five. I agree. And Utah is like seven. Into, you may be running into what you said at the beginning exactly. of the exactly. And you're running into the U.S. Betters. money. Betters just throwing. you got yeah. a lot of rich people in LA. Exactly. Well, I well, put you money got down. So like, I put money on USC not yeah, getting there. Yeah, but it's there. like Colin Cowherd blowing his load on mm-hmm. every, every week, you know, talking about how great they're going to be. And so I'm looking at that as one of those that when I bet on these, that I'm in the money from like, I don't know. Four weeks in because they've already lost twice. Yeah. Um, and so it, nearly in the money. Yeah, that, in that seems case. like a no-brainer to me. They get they did get a, a damn good running back though. The kid from Oregon. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah. see. Yeah. That's true. You, you, can't, you can't. I mean, he you can't make yourself a hole. That's yeah, true. You got to have an offensive line to create unless that. Unless you're Ramondre. Well, unless you. <laughs> yeah. So Nebraska seven and a half. Um, we know Nebraska was the best. What were they last year? Three and nineteen <laughs> in the history of football. So, Lucas, what do you think? You're the Nebraska expert. When I went through their schedule, I actually, for some reason, I've got them at eight and four. Wow. Um, I that's with, them the that's over. with no preconceived. I didn't see any of these lines beforehand. So that's good. Eight and four. I could see it seven and five. So that's a perfect line for me. Like yeah, I think that's a fair seven line. and a half. That's a tough one. That's mm-hmm. one I wouldn't bet on. Mm-hmm. Because right, it's too I think close. they when I, when I went through the schedule, I was like, well, they could go seven and five or eight and four. I gave them the benefit of the doubt against like a Minnesota and, right. and a couple of, or something like that. Because they got the easier of the. Do. I don't think they play Ohio State or Michigan this season. Right. So oh, they've the got the easier of the Big Ten schedules. Yep. And there's a good chance they beat OU. So there's not. There is a there is a that that line will be pretty tough. I I think that line not to get ahead of ourselves, but I think you might be surprised by how much OU is a favorite. In I that could game. see twelve and a half. Yeah. I think I they win seven strong. of their first eight games. And so, just a coin flip easy. That they, they lose to OU it. and they, they finish out losing losing four straight. Oh, so you have them under? Under. I have them seven. Yep. S- yep. Yeah. Connor? I've got Nebraska at six and six with Scott Frost getting fired at the end of the season. So um, you got under. I think they win their first three games. Mm-hmm. However, that the first, first three? game... The first yeah, three. We're their fourth. We're they're, their fourth game. They're oh, they're week, they're week zero. zero. Mm. That first, that week zero game against Northwestern in Crucial. Dublin. Yeah. It's in Ireland. And I want to. Yeah, that. and I, I want to comment on that us. too. Yeah, but both teams are dealing. I think with it's that. real important for us. Yes. They yeah, are, both teams are think, dealing with it. That's I think true. Pat Fitzger- I think Pat Fitzgerald is, does a better job of getting his dudes up. I mean, he's a better like coach than Scott Frost. And exactly. So, and I think that line was at like eleven and a half last time I checked in Nebraska's favor. So, so you like that? You, you I like, like the, the line. Dog. I like I like Nebraska to win the game. I definitely don't like them to win by more than seven points. Right. Well, I'll, I'll have them as an over, just to kind of be different a little bit and to be a little bit hopeful as to what they can put together. But also leaning a lot on the who they're playing. If they had Michigan and Ohio State on the schedule, that would be different. Um, I mean, and we'll see what Casey Thompson does, and we, too. And that's right. I'm, I'm right on that. They're, they don't play either of them. Can we confirm that? No, they don't have Ohio State or Michigan. So if they, are they going to let Casey Thompson run a little bit? They got Michigan. I they would say Michigan? they do have Michigan. 
Okay. I think uh, if they I think if they let All right. I'll stick with my over. I think if they I'm let Casey less... Thompson run a little bit. Uh-huh. They'll be tremendously better offensively than they have been. I, I totally agree. Because before Martinez just ran like a crazy person right. and couldn't throw at all. Casey Thompson can throw, but he showed at Texas that he really didn't want to did run. Did not much. want to run, right? But but, yeah. but when, you don't but know when he did, how much is that's the coach. But though. when he did, it really worked because before yep. they played OU, he did run a little bit, mm-hmm. and then come the OU game for the rest they, of the season, they, he they really locked didn't it down. Run. Yeah. So their their toughest games. If you're a Nebraska <laughs> fan, you're looking at the schedule and you're saying, which games might I lose or probably will lose? You're looking at OU. You're looking at um, at Michigan. You're looking at Wisconsin, and you're looking at at Iowa. So, you got yeah, Minnesota. That's, that's you got, winnable. Those are winnable games. They're winnable games. You got Minnesota at home. You got Illinois at home. Who? Yeah. <laughs> beat them last the year. The Northwestern that, Dublin game. You're could, at yeah. you're at Purdue, which is tough. And you got you got Indiana at home as well. Well, so. here is my take on the the Dublin experience and what that will imply for them, and why I think that's a really really dumb move from for the, from their point of view. It's a big marketing move potentially. Um, you've got to get the TV to really love that game to make it a big marketing move. Otherwise, you're going across a quarter the of the world, across <laughs> yeah. the pond, and throwing back off and your time game. zones to come back and throw an, play another game. To play and at 11.30 on Fox. That's really tough. And you go from what is a game you're trying to get your team up for to another game you're really trying to get your team up for. A lot of variables there. I don't think that works out well for them. I think that's a bad decision on their part, or a bad situation at least. So I like OU. I like that as a benefit to OU for sure. Mm-hmm. It's like having a, a Thursday night game. I don't want to play a Thursday night Heck game. No. no good comes from that for a team that's the the favorite. So I, I love it that they're going out there and doing it. I think it is potentially throws some wrenches into their planning. They're, they're just their their sleep schedule. I mean, and four everything. weeks ahead of playing us, though, I don't think it's a factor in in our game. I, would I think actually, it can be a factor for everything yeah. in their season. I, I think agree. It can mess I agree to up. an extent with that, just because of the team that we saw get beat by Illinois last year in week zero. I think. I think they played Illinois. In week yeah, I think zero that's right. Yeah, that's right. And the team that we saw play OU and Norman, stark difference. I would agree. But they had a, a lot of emotions working For in their sure. favor, and they were leaning heavily on it, and they were playing OU, which I don't know if you noticed OU last year, right? And I'm, but I'm, I'm wondering, though, you know, to that point, is, I don't think is if did. they isolate the OU game this year as well. I which mean, could I, be bad for the 7-5, and five, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you pour your heart into a game that you end up losing. Even if you win it, then you, you slip in a few others. So uh, mine's a very tentative they have, a bi- they have a bye week after But OU. I will say... I mean, it's the 51st anniversary of the game of the century. That's right. I will say now. How did they do against OU in '72? OU won that game, right? Won it pretty, pretty well, if I remember I right. Born. So, um, I have to look that up. Uh, so, look that up real quick. So, I will say with Casey Thompson, and maybe this is just wishful thinking, and I could see a lot of Nebraska fans having wishful thinking there, uh, especially the older fans. They're thinking this guy was a runner. He was obviously a tremendous runner. He sees the value in a running quarterback. Hopefully, he lets Casey Thompson run from that standpoint because if that, that's a that's a great tool, a great weapon. If he does that, I think they have more success. If he doesn't, if he bottles him up, then yeah, I, I think they've got a yeah, lot I think of that They trouble. have to have that part of the game, I think. Oklahoma beats Nebraska 17-14 and 72. All right, it's a close game. In, well, okay. We beat them in, in 2000 and then lost to them in 01 at Nebraska. That's, Could be a little repeat. Is any of that relevant, though, obviously? Yeah. Was the 1972 game relevant? No, I meant that too. It wasn't. <laughs> Alabama, 10.5. Georgia, 10.5. Clemson, 10.5. I'm going to jump down and include them in this since we've got three 10.5 um, uh, teams. We can hit pause and I can go get you some lighter fluid on that. Clemson oh, was not on our lighter. Pre, on. pre-talking. Just, no, it's right so. inside. Okay. I did not look at the Clemson since it was not included in our rundown. Oh yeah, no, I, I threw you for for a loop on. I that. have Bama twelve and zero. I'm going over on ten and a half Bama. I'm over on Bama. Oh, sorry. Twelve. I don't. I looked at the schedule. They've got A and M at home. LSU's probably not going to be any good. I mean, not you know. Right. Great. <laughs> right. So fake accent. I if they lose a game, eleven and one is still over on Vegas. Mm-hmm. I don't see them losing. 
a game, and I definitely don't see him losing more than one game. So you got okay. So let me get this right. You got I'm Alabama Alabama's. as an over. Yep. You got Georgia as Georgia. I got eleven and one. Okay. So that's an over. What do you think? We throw 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 me a Clemson number. Over or under? Clemson. They play in the ACC. I, Who's there out of conference? Literally plays nobody. South Carolina. Yeah. Oh. First year with a new defensive coordinator. I, I could. I think they're the best front four in the country, though. They're going to be let's, good. Let's go they're over. Let's go 11 1 for them. Or 12 0. Somewhere. Let's go Jay, over. what do you say? I'll say over Bama, under Georgia, over Clemson. Okay. Georgia right. comes back oh. to being Georgia. I like I like I like that. They take. come back to just having a top three defense in the country. No, I just think they're gonna <laughs> perennial, you know, ten and two, right? Nine three team. They're still in a really 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 bad they division. They lost way too many people. They did lose a lot of people. Yeah, but where have they been recruiting the last three years? Oh, they've been there, but so you still they're gonna reload. They will. There's. I mean, it's not like it's not like none of you know they lost a bunch of defensive players to NFL, but it's not like none of the guys that are going to be playing for them this year didn't play a bunch of snaps last year. No, but Bama's the only team that truly reloads. No other teams really reload. They'll they'll mostly reload and still be really really good, but Bama's the only one that can legit replace a whole bunch of players, and they. you couldn't even tell. In a system yeah, that just is we, we crazy. We say that, then. but that's because Bama's always number one, two, or three in recruiting. And Georgia hasn't been top three in recruiting until now. You know, they were like five, six, seven, or whatever for for a few years. So, But now that they've had a top three recruiting class probably for the last three years straight, they are in that realm of reloading and their being def- available right away. Their defense was right so away. good last year. Hard act to follow. Extremely hard to follow. And their offense still just is not – it's it's just not – What do you think, dynamic. Connor? Uh, I've got Bama over, Georgia over, Clemson under. Um, Clemson, I mean, w- I do want to say, you know, they are in a layup league. They, Where's that Miami game at? They play NC State. That's at. not a gimme game. It's it's still – it's in Clemson. Um, they're at Notre Dame. And, they, I mean, they have they have Miami late. It's, it's, it's at Clemson. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean that's I still uh that's tough. I I will just play the the wild card. I am going to say 9 and 3. I'll go under 10 and a half. All right. I'm going to get two of the three right. I don't know which two. I'm going to go under under under. Mm. And here's my thinking. One, it's damn hard to win 11 or 12 games. A lot of shit has to happen right. No matter who you are. A lot of stuff has to happen right. And you look at Alabama and Georgia Obviously, tremendous programs, tremendous talent and everything. But if you look back at the last few years, it doesn't take a lot for them to lose a couple games they didn't lose in any given season. And this season is not going to be any different. Granted that Georgia plays in a weak comp- or side of the conference. Uh, granted that they're very good. Granted that Clemson doesn't have a real tough schedule. I just like the idea that all they have to do is lose two games and you and you're in the money on any of these, these, these uh, That's different good teams. For sure. So I'm going under, under, under. I really expect one of them is going to be wrong. I just don't know which one. I think it's Bama. I just don't see two losses on their schedule. I don't either. I, I, re- I really, really, really. It's do tough. Not. I mean, the A&M games tough. at home. LSU, I think, was on the road. Maybe LSU's but just LSU. I don't think oh, they're, they're going to be bad. They just lost. Who their, else? They just I lost mean, that quarterback. I guess too. Auburn's. You know, it's oh, they lost their quarterback. Game. Yeah, well, who was going to be their starter and now is not, and then decided to quit the team. Oh, yeah, LSU. Quit football. Yeah, quit football. Yeah. I don't think he's even going to go anywhere. So, he's I mean, got yeah, good, Bama, he's got Bama good has, NIL deal, too, and he's just quitting football. Bama at Arkansas wow. is interesting to That's me. It's just, right and I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. But Bama at Arkansas is interesting. They have A&M at home. Um, they're at Tennessee, but Tennessee is Tennessee. Yeah. That's they are at LSU, and they are – after that, they are at Ole Miss. So, I mean – well, Ole Miss has times. to take a step down. They they lost their offensive coordinator. They lost their Heisman candidate quarterback to the NFL. Yeah. I don't see how Ole Miss can keep up with. Them. They won't be as good as they were last year. There's right. not many times you get a a pissed off Nick Saban revenge tour either. It just doesn't <laughs> yeah. happen to him very much. So yeah, 
and that's got value. And they have a Heisman Trophy winning quarterback coming back. Yeah. That's true. He's Which they normally don't have. And they have the best player in the country, supposedly, on defense. Yeah. Which yeah. is going to absolutely murder, murder Texas' quarterback. Texas quarterback. <laughs> Both <laughs> Texas quarterbacks. What is he, a, a defensive lineman? <laughs> Will Anderson. He's a, he's a rush. The other no, thing working. He's a stand-up rush linebacker guy, guy but yeah. he's... He was unblockable last year, just completely, he would have, completely unblockable. He couldn't go to the NFL because he hadn't done three. Yeah. He, he would have been. He would have been. He wasn't eligible. eligible three year thing. Yeah, he wasn't eligible to go to the NFL. That thing that everyone has to sit out because he would have been the yeah. number one. Be the number he was going to be the number one pick, <laughs> and he couldn't go. Couldn't go. Yeah. Well, the other thing that's that works in my favor is injuries are asymmetrical. Injuries hurt you; they don't help you. Well, I guess injuries to another team, but you can't count on that. Right. So if there are in, key injuries on these teams. That could interfere with their ability to get to, to 11 wins. So I'm going to stick with my unders. But then again, that would have been a losing bet uh, last year. Now, what was Clemson last year, though? 10-2, and two, and they had Ten no offense. Two. That's right, and no offense. No, they lost three games. I'm they did lose. Yeah, they were 9-3. They were and three. <coughs> Well, they still had no offense. They went and beat, nine and three beat and they... West, uh, Wake Forest in the championship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now we're left with two more teams to talk about, and before you guys have any surprise teams to talk about, I got Texas A&M at eight and a half, and Notre Dame at eight and a half. These are kind of weird wild cards for me. I was a little surprised by the Texas A&M eight and a half. I thought that they would be higher than that. They've recruited really well. I think they're well coached. Um, maybe a little overhyped, but still well coached. Um, I haven't looked really in depth at what their schedule is. Uh, obviously, the Alabama game is a really tough one, but that's just one. I was going to say over for A and M and under for Notre Dame. Okay, I've got I've got both over, <clears throat> both at nine wins. Um, we'll get into the surprise teams here in a minute, but um, I think A and M gets upset by Miami in week three. I think Miami comes in there and <clears throat> does what nobody thinks they're going to do and, and wins. I think A and M is really poor at recruiting quarterbacks as well, or at least landing quarterbacks. I think they have seems QB. to be. I think they have another QB controversy. Is quarterback there. important? I, I, I had this guy named Kyler Murray once. So maybe they, a little. Yeah, they, well, they let do him stay him. on the field. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little. Maybe a little important to I a had team. Johnny Manziel. The Jimbo, was pretty good. the Jimbo Fisher narrative of him being some quarterback guru just yeah. doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make just Jameis Winston. At all. I mean, <laughs> and that was even a blip on. The, I mean, the, yeah, wow, you go that back was and a look fluke. That, that was a fluke. That got every. I mean, remember how much we were screaming. This team should get beat. This team should get beat. They were worse than Texas with Vince Young in yeah. terms of relying on a quarterback who's winning it with his feet and his improvisation. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I don't. I think Jimbo is a good, a, a great coach, not an elite coach. No, I, I completely. agree. He may agree. be an elite recruiter, but then again, it helps when you've got a donor base that's got like a trillion dollars. That's a massive Aggie factor thing, right? I mean. The Aggies yeah. are going to Aggie, and I think they're going to Aggie, and I think they finished nine and three. That's something to say about that. that. You know, back to what I was saying about Baylor having their stuff together. A and M is is different. A and M is trying to always out Texas, Texas, in terms of having a a self fulfilled pro- prestige that they're just fat and happy and don't actually demand excellence. Yeah. Where they're so satisfied with all of the tradition and the and lo- self love. That they don't actually demand that they they rise up to a level yeah. that is they can't actually cross that threshold. Elite, right? You you see them cross that threshold occasionally when they go and they beat a Bama or something like that, right? But then you'll have some preceding event or succeeding event. That yeah, that's what happened last year. Exactly, completely yeah. takes away from all of that. Yeah. So weird things happen in yeah, college. Notre Station. Dame. I'll, I'll get into some of that here in a minute. With well, some let's talk. Let, teams. Let's talk about some surprise teams. I got A and M nine and three. I've got Notre Dame ten and two. Okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll go over over. I'm over on both. Over over on both. Yeah, I okay. can see Notre Dame being nine and three, but that's still over the eight and a half. They, they almost have too much talent at a And Just I mean, you'll you'll accidentally win nine games. Well, you see a team like that. So over 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 over. Yeah. You see a team like that, and it's that that's going to be a hotbed of transfers. After yeah. after a hot recruiting class, right? Because you're going to have guys who think they're going to see the field that don't, and it's going to well, be... Well, you got four five-star uh, defensive linemen in one class, which has never been done before. Right. I mean, everyone's not going to play. Yeah. It's just, right. And again, I think that and <coughs> people have, and not to get completely off track, but that's why it's going to be so interesting to see where NIL goes mm-hmm. down the line. Yeah. Is, and I know they've talked about some other pods, but I've actually said this before, of your return on investment is... Very, very, very low 
yeah. in most most cases. Right? Money's not unlimited. Getting guys and you in the start door to, is one thing. You start to figure out, wait a second, I want to see, if nothing else, when you talk about return on investment, it can just be the investment of I want to see success with my football team. Obviously, it's a, a facade of where they're actually delivering advertising value or something to whatever you're, you're supposedly paying them for. Right. But really what you want is to see success, and then you start to think, wait a second, I need to see four guys that see the field and actually are successful and contribute to my team's success, not a shotgun approach of paying lots and lots of money to a lot of guys that maybe never even see the field and transfer exactly. and then play against me. Surprise teams. That's a fun pod right there. Give me some surprise teams. Um, I'll let others go first. I've got a list of four. Oh, I didn't dive too deep into this. Um, Who's the Cincinnati of this year, if you can? Mm, Which is BYU. obviously a tough thing to pull. That's a good. That's a really good one. I concur. Mainly just because you got a bunch of grown men playing college football. They've been on the cusp yeah, but they've of had being that, that for years a while. and still I really haven't. Well, they were really close last year to being that team, and and in the year before, remember in the COVID year, they they arguably should have been competing for a lot more. I, and we're, we're sort of illegitimately written out of it. I, I don't see them because when you look at their schedule, they have Baylor, Oregon, Notre Dame, and at Arkansas. So <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't know if you can call them a surprise. Like, Well, it'd well, be a surprise if they win. They, they, those they all can four win losses. every one of those games, and then they're a surprise team. They, they win. win all four of those games. They're in the top three teams in the country. Exactly, and in cruising. I think if they win three or four of those games. I mean, they got Baylor at home, but they're at Oregon. And the Notre Dame is neutral site in Vegas. You know Notre Dame, those dudes will all – that'll be 70-30 Notre Dame fans. The Mormons, the Mormons Notre Dame travel fans. as well. That's right. The Mormons travel. The, 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 that is That's all those people too. do. Not What's to those? Vegas, though, because they're not allowed to do anything in that town. Uh, well, they'll, they'll go and they'll, <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll go for the football. And process they flies. will go for the football. So, and then Arkansas, they got that one at home. That's, that's a weird because that game is October – 15th. That's, yeah, you'd have to give the Catholics really... the advantage in Vegas, but I think that... Um, they finish the season at Stanford, which I don't know how Stanford's going to be, but that's, yeah, that's, I hope that's David, a tough place to play. I hope David Shaw figures it out. If, their win if, total if is pretty decent. low for this year, though. Yeah, they're, they're, they are. I, just, I, don't see, I've always I don't see BYU being Stanford a surprise though. team to me. Well, There's too many tough games on their schedule. It is tough games, but it's not like it's... Alabama, Georgia, OU, and Clemson, or Ohio State, right? But if they go eight and four, are we gonna say they're a surprise team, or they gotta go ten? No, 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 no. Depends no. who they beat, though. No, we'd say ten. Uh, when I say yeah. a surprise team, if they split those four, if they go two and two on that stretch of four games, and win the rest, about, and win the rest, yeah, ten and so, two. So, so yeah. could BYU BYU's line or win total on that Vegas site that we were looking at eight and a half. I've got them over on yeah. that. I've got them either nine and three or ten and two. I can see nine and three. Winning one of those four games I just mentioned. Remind, so we said, what is it? It's Baylor, Oregon, Arkansas, and who is the other one? Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what type of team Arkansas is at that point in the season. And then they have to run the rest of the table too, which obviously they've got some crap. They've got USF, Wyoming, Utah State. Win, win, win. Liberty, East win. Carolina at Boise. That one could go either way. The Holy War against I Utah guess. State. At Boise's Stanford. not that good anymore, They're unless not. they've unless they've risen back up. They to almost beat OSU in Stillwater last year. Or no, no, that no, was no, the road. It was, in, it was, was in, at Boise. Was yeah. Boise. The other thing about Notre Dame, they could be a surprise negative team because of all the unknown factors. They they retain their staff, but they do have a new head coach. That head coach did not look very good against the Cowboys in the bowl game, for what it's worth. Um, now, Gundy has a pretty successful record in bowl games. I think he does a good job of getting his team ready to play, so maybe you shouldn't write off Notre Dame as a result of blowing a big lead against OSU at the end, in, in the second half. But um, I don't know. It, it remains to be seen how good Notre Dame actually can be. So I think I have Notre Dame as actually a bad surprise team, yeah, a disappointing well, team. Um, dovetails right with that. I think, but I, I still think they go over their predicted win total. I but, still think but, they, but still a disappointment. But I think it's a disappointment that this team starts at number five in both the coaches' poll and the AP That's poll. pretty rich. And anything outside of a one-loss season, in my opinion, if you're a Notre Dame fan or someone who is looking at the college football playoff as a whole, you're disappointed in a Notre. You, you're not. You're not letting Notre Dame in unless no. unless they only lose to Ohio State in Week right. One. Right. Right. And I 
I don't see Notre Dame not losing more than one game. And they've got Clemson and USC on their schedule. No, I didn't. Got to beat USC. I didn't have Ohio State in there. I could have very well had them in there. What What is their win total? Is it nine and a half or ten and a half? It's got to be up there. It's got to be at that. 10 well, they. And a half I think range. it's nine and a half. Pull it up because it. They have a little bit tougher schedule. Playing Ohio Notre State, State, Notre Dame, ten and a half. Ten and a half. They're home at, home at Wisconsin. I would take well, the under on that. I, it's a nine or ten for sure. I mean, it's. Uh, uh, I I'd say it's nine or ten. I would take the under as well. They're they're at home against Wisconsin. They're at Michigan State, Always at Penn hard State. Game. Very hard game. Michigan the Michigan game. games at home. When is the that's Penn not State their game? whiteout game? Penn, I saw Penn State's whiteout game is going to be um, Auburn. No, they were no. At it's Auburn. somebody. It's somebody uh, not very good. I don't know. Ohio, Ohio State's it's, offense. I heard him talk about it. It's like really, Rutgers or something. Really, it's, really good. It is going to be really ridiculous. good. They're going to be a really good team. No, they're at but they have an ability to disappoint. And they'll play teams like Penn State, who I would label the Kansas State of the Big Ten, a, a team that, that is That's a good comparison. not so great. They've got a, a legendary record that extends longer than K-State's, obviously. But... They get a little more credit than I think they deserve, yet they play really tough in those environments. Um, it could be, I don't know, I, I, I got Ohio State on the under there. Uh, that's just tough to get to that 10.5. Playing the games they play, Michigan's obviously going to be a tough game. It's always a tough game just because of the rivalry and everything. No, I'm just throwing this out there. You've got Bama, Georgia, uh-huh. Clemson, uh-huh. and Ohio State all under. Uh huh. I don't have to be right on so all of them. So you have like a... Pretty chaotic playoff. Somewhat, but not that, not necessarily. Look back at history. How many times have there been, I mean, look how many 11 plus win teams there are, and they're usually not the top four teams. They're usually a Cincinnati or the surprise teams that slip in. Who was the team that just missed getting into it last year? Who was in the, the run? I mean, shoot, OU was, could have been in there, obviously, and they wouldn't have deserved to be. Um, Notre well, it was going to be since well, it was it was Notre Dame, yeah. So they and they weren't a ten and a half point over under, I don't believe. So I I've got uh, my surprise team as far as a team that could finish with a decent record. Uh, Air Force, I think Air Force could could break off like a ten and two season. Air Eve? Force's win total right now, according to Vegas Insider, is eight and a half. Eight and a half. Yeah, I would go over on Air Force. That's um, fair. Who's, who's on the show? They've got Northern Iowa, Colorado at home, at Wyoming, Nevada at home, Navy at home, at Utah State, at UNLV, Boise at home. The Navy, ooh, the Army Navy game is in Arlington this year. That's, That's November 5th. No, the Air Force. I mean, Air Force. Yeah, Air Force Army. Yeah, sorry. Right, obviously. That's it. That's in Arlington. Um, New Mexico, Colorado State, at San Diego State. I like the over on that. Now that seems eight and a half seems kind of low. I will say that I like the over on that, even though what is not what you listed, which is a, a a possibility, is an away game at Russia. That could happen, and that'd be a big distraction for the Air Force. But I think they win that game too. Be playing much hockey players. They don't have a whole lot of pilots, I don't think, on that squad. Because by that point, you don't think those guys could fit into to, a cockpit. Those guys are. R- too young to really be <laughs> fighter pilots at that age. Well, somebody's got to fill those babies up with, with fuel and missiles. That's true. My um, my other non-surprising team or disappointing team, sorry, is surprise a surprising disappointment. Um, not maybe not to us, but to to the nation. It appears is Michigan. Um, Ooh. Michigan's win total on Vegas Insider is nine and a half. I've got Michigan at eight and four. I like that. Um, I think I think. You have a massive hangover effect. I think their quarterback situa- situation is not nearly as firm as what everyone thought it was at the end of last year. I think they have good guys up back there, but I don't think – I think it's going to be a very Jim Harbaugh year. Are they it's going to really make him think about his job. I agree, and are they not the OU of the Big Ten, mm-hmm. at least the OU that we've seen in the past in few the past. years, exactly. um, where they're a little bit perennially overrated and disappointing. Yep. What, what's the win total for South Carolina? Ooh. Like that's this. one that should have been on the list. You have a guess? Because of the OU. Oh, man, they've got they've got a tough schedule. I'll say six and a half. They've got, they're have got they at Arkansas, Georgia at home, at Kentucky, A&M at home, 
at Florida, Tennessee at home, at Clemson. That's mm-hmm. that's a rough schedule. Six is their win total. Six. That's Man. A, huh. Really interesting line. Yeah. That's that, that's a lot of tough games. It will be really. interesting. I, I think I think Rattler is going to bring a, a lot of poise and maybe talent there at that position that they have not had. Yeah. I agree, and this may be my heart. Years. I am really rooting for Rattler. I'm really rooting for Beamer. Yeah. Um, Stogner. I'm really rooting for Stogner. I want to see them do well. If I were Shane Beamer, I would be promoting the hell out of the six win line and saying all we have to do is beat this and we are crowning this a very successful <laughs> season because with that schedule that would be a successful season. Yeah. I think if they can win three um, of the top or ones. sorry be a top three uh, team in that division. I think that's oh yeah man. I think Beamer comes out of there. I mean, oh he's Golden Boy too. You got you got Georgia, you got Florida, and you got South Carolina. And you got Tennessee on Tennessee, that side as well. Kentucky, Even Kentucky, Kentucky's yeah. ranked. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Yeah, got a stoops there. Historically, South Carolina is a team much like Tennessee has been in the last de- couple decades that they don't deserve their fan base. Yeah, and if you can give reward that fan base with some big wins. They will reward you with a, a lot of love for a long time, and and I and I, I like Shane Beamer. Did you guys a lot. see the Beamer video the other day? Yeah, where he walked his team up to the the. Oh no, I didn't see the that. The very top of the stadium, and basically gave a massive monologue as to it. Basically, what you just said, hmm. you know, throughout the years, all these people come, they sit here in the sweltering heat, mm-hmm. and they walk, they come here, they pay money to watch you guys. We like use, you said, a fan base yeah. very much above the level of what their football team we use plays. A, uh, we have a fund manager that we use down in Dallas that they've got a couple of those guys are longtime South Carolina supporters. And to hear them tell the stories and, and going down and supporting their team, and they just love it. They absolutely love their team. Yep. And it's, it's a love that does not match the record. No. By any means. So if they that'll can start fun, living up to that. That'll be a fun that. road game in the future for mm-hmm. sure. Columbia will be cool. It's a beautiful setting. Be really nice in the fall. What's Wisconsin's total? Wisconsin's win total is at eight and a half. I like the under on that. Me I am too. a perennial I hater of Wisconsin. I think they are the Texas A&M of the big ten. It's like when I think of Wisconsin, it's basically Iowa and red. Mm-hmm. They are the <laughs> same team. In my, in there my, is only one team in the Big Ten. I think that, they've been better than Iowa. Over that the years. disappoints me more than than Wisconsin in terms of the hype, and that is Michigan, M- Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota. Who and hypes Minnesota? Well, PJ, here's PJ here's throwing the boat. <laughs> they does. have cost me more money in gambling. <laughs> I swear to God, that team has lost more games they should win in critical times for me. So, and that's just a special hate that I have for Minnesota. But no, that. They they are not obviously a team of, of any notoriety. They're kind of a forgotten other also ran in the in the Big Ten conference. You've got Cincinnati at nine total. Uh, you got, that's what their win total line is at. You've got Houston at nine. Apparently Houston is going to be the team to beat in the American Conference this year. They've got they've got they Texas got Tech this conference. year. Yeah, and they have another, they have Kansas as well. So they've got another non Power Five school, I guess. Um, hmm. Kansas is playing Houston. Mm. Is that right? I thought that's what we said earlier. Maybe I'm wrong, but no, I think that's what you um, said. Just because you said it doesn't mean it's right. I'm though. looking well, at no, some other. I mean, some another interesting win totals. NC State at eight and a half. I know they're ranked. Ah, that's that's, that's strong. I mean, I guess you are you are considering a somebody's got to be up team. there. Yeah, ACC. But, somebody's got to win some games, right? But boy, that's such a crapshoot in that conference. It seems like that could. I don't know. You're really. Houston diving deep Kansas. in that. My surprise team will be, uh, we'll go with Mississippi State. Ooh, okay. I like it. I like it, uh, at least from my heart. Got them winning more than like six and Mike, a half games. Mike Leach, yeah. I can well, see Well, this is cheating that. a little bit, but they have 80% of their returning production from the previous season, where they went seven and six. If history's and any Leach, guide... He should Leach be able to do that. Yeah, gets his team out of nowhere to kind of kind of pull a nine ten. I mean, look at, look at what he did at Washington State. I mean, it's mm-hmm. there's nothing. Well, speaking and of, for sure, what he did at Texas Tech. I mean, they're at LSU, A and M at home, Arkansas at home, at Kentucky, at Bama, Auburn at home, Georgia's on their schedule, at Ole Miss. 
Well, that's six hard games. That's uh, it is six hard games. But yeah. you look back. I I I'm a big believer in Mike Leach. I think he's really good. I think he also can be a little overrated in, at times and in ways. But if you look back at his success for what it's worth at Texas Tech, he was playing when the Big 12 was a very tough conference, and he was winning a lot of games. And I don't know how the won. talent compares to to what he's got now in, in, in another tough league, but I do think that he has the ability to, um, like you're saying, Jay, come in and surprise some teams, be an overlooked team, give some and bodies some trouble. he hasn't quite done that yet. No, he Mississippi hasn't. State. Mm -mm. God, some of these ACC win totals are just mind-boggling. I mean, you got... What's Wake Forest? Eight and a half. Oh, that's that's a strong sell, under sell, sell. with the with the injury to the court or whatever that is with the quarterback. Yeah. What is that's UCLA? Wild. Eight and a half. Oh, <laughs> what? No way, right? I mean, I don't put a lot of stock in a in a target on your back, but they do have a target on their back I mean, for I leaving the, you, the conference. I guess you look at Chip Kelly and you think that he's going to coach Finally. his guys up. Finally. Finally. Yeah. Not. I I don't know. Have you ever traveled to? Uh, to UCLA, have, have you guys? Had, yeah, we yeah, all did. I, I didn't go all there. four of us have been yeah. there. Was there was were there any UCLA fans that actually made it into the stadium outside of the tailgate? Because no, that was it, actually more than I thought there would be. <laughs> if, they were, a lot. Honestly, <laughs> if they were going to win a game of tailgates, they'd be. I mean, I'd put their win total at ten and a half for sure. Yeah, but <laughs> just for the the the, the ambiance of, of I'm the surprised whole Connor can remember that game. <laughs> no, I just don't remember the night before. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I, I have an off book question. Uh, when will the state of Oklahoma get sports gambling? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. When did we finally get our liquor laws br <laughs> brought up to, like, the 1960s? Yeah, what do we want to put the over-under at? Four and a half years? Uh, sadly, so far out. And I don't know what role the the, the tribes. tribes play in this. Um, well, the, the problem is frustrates in me. a fight with the tribes exactly. constantly. Yeah. And they are the most set up to be able to do it. Right. Because they already have the facilities to turn some of the rooms at the casinos into sports, sports books. books. Yeah. The, True. A lot of them already done horse racing off I mean, track. I, I would say the, the reason they're the most set up because we've granted them right. this privilege. Anybody could, we, we could start. Reparations. Tomorrow, team. we could start something if we were granted the ability to do it. It's not going to happen. If it's going to happen for anybody, it's going to be the tribes. And right now, Stid has got his problems with the tribes. Right. And I don't know where the legislature is on. I'm sure they're pretty split. But I just wish we get into the modern world. As a libertarian, I just wish we had freedom to do I mean, how many you know, states? I think things. it's like 30 states now or something, maybe. Mm -hmm. they have like, somewhere around there that have legalized it. Missing some opportunities. I mean, what is the hold up? Just the morality of it? No. no. Well, I think it's a classic. It, was, it wasn't legal until what, two years ago? Uh, a little Other bit than, longer than that. About in, four, Atlantic four City years ago. Four, nationwide. four years ago, the Supreme Court said, no, you can't enforce yeah. that as a federal yeah. law. Um, Three or four years ago then. So and they've been coming online little by little. Like things. Massachusetts just passed. Right. Um, it's a bootleggers and Baptist theory. So it's, it's the morality is the Baptist, and then the bootleggers are those who benefit from it. And so the, the, everyone that's, you know, Vegas, um, New Jersey, and now other states, they all have an interest in lobbying to not have it legalized in other places because then they get the benefit of having all the business. So you get it from both angles. Um, but so the last one to move becomes the hardest one to move, in, in a sense. I mean, I've been gambling in Oklahoma since seventh grade on various sports. I stuff. did it earlier than that. I remember my dad brought a parlay card home. Yeah, and that's where I started. With I made the mistake winning seventh grade. on one when I was probably <laughs> like a six -teamer third or something. grade or something. <laughs> it was like a three or four, and I was like, yeah. I know how this works. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's ridiculous that there isn't at least some it's very legislative action started. At least to do it as poorly as they've done it in other states, which is very poor. At my understanding, I think it's Washington, D.C., where it's extremely cartelized, and you have to go and do it in a very specific place and in a specific way, which just hands a big gift to whoever's granted that privilege. But at this point, just give me the privilege. I mean, give me the ability. Been available. Give me something. I've been able to gamble online since, hell, at least 1998, probably. Is when I, I think the frustrating part about sports gambling online is, is kind of like what we said earlier is some of the sites that you have access to either are poorly administered sites or because they're run that, on offshore 
Well, it's because there's no competition. Right, exactly. If there was they competition, they, right. they yeah. would have yeah. they would have to be top the of the line, so and the market would would weed yep. those guys out. And 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 that is a probably helps something that helps the argument when you talk about the the online. That was a more foreign concept to people who were the traditional 50, 60 year old person in, in a state legislature. Today, those people are older. They're our age or older, yeah. and they've seen it online. So it, it, it resonates as true, or they're like, oh, okay, it is ac actually already happening. It's not something that's just in some uh, really seedy, dis seedy back yeah. room. It's something that normal people are doing. Yeah. What bugs me is when you, when you go into sort of the haves and the have-nots, I got news for you, the haves have been gambling on sports in their own corners right. a lot and they think it's okay to do it in their uh, living rooms or or, or their um, little poker rooms circles, at the country right. club their circles they don't want the other people to have the privilege of doing it but i i hope that that's changing i think what would be really cool is if you have like a fantasy football type situation for just oh you football let's say uh-huh how how interesting would that, that would be, be so cool just where you would we'd have a site we should develop something like that. I like let's let's think about that, and we'll come back on we'll the next back. pod and we'll talk about back. that. In yeah. the next pod, we're going to be talking almost exclusively OU predictions. We're going to get into the depths of what our average punting stat is going to be. And no, we're going to talk oh. about all the stuff. We're going to we're going to get into all kinds of predictions about OU. How somehow we're going to win 13 out of 12 games. And then, of course, win the playoffs and then go on to the Super Bowl. Um, we're going to talk about the players that we expect to excel, the, the, the positions that we think are going to be critical, Hopefully where we'll we're going to see improvement. Hopefully we will have a depth chart by then, be able to talk about all that. Anything else to discuss before we, we sign off? I don't know. Digging into all this is... Uh I'm at a fever pitch of excitement for sure. It's coming, baby. It's, uh, it's coming. Up. I am Look at the clock. We're almost 16 days away now. We've been oh, talking so long. So it's fun. exciting. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks. Boomer, Boomer Sooner. Boomer Sooner. Boomer Sooner.